Welcome, brothers and sisters, to another episode in this series of Marriage and Divorce. I'm here discussing with Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad, who currently resides in the UK and is on the board of the Islamic Sharia Council of Britain and is also the founding member of the website www.islam21c.com. We have been discussing the very important topic of the Wali and his role and what influence should he have on the Nikah? Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Regarding the Wali, we've talked a little bit about the conditions of the Wali. If there's anything else you think we've missed, please add. And also then, let's discuss the situation if the Wali abuses his right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. We mentioned the main conditions of the Wali, that he has to be a Muslim, male. Okay. From the father's side, according to the following hierarchy, the father, the grandfather, or the son, then the brothers, full brothers, half-brothers, then the paternal uncles. And then we discussed it, what would happen. So this is the wali. We discussed that his age, he should be okay, an adult person, has reached the age of puberty or more. Obviously, when we discuss about the father or the grandfather, yeah, then they have reached the age of puberty and they are old people. But if there is a case where the son is acting as a wali or the brother is acting as a wali, and I want to emphasize on the point that the power of the father as a wali is the highest. And after that is the power of the grandfather. The power of the brother is low. Yeah, the power of the uncle is even lower. So if there is a sister and her wali is her uncle, the procedure to go against him is not like the procedure of going against the will of her father. Because of the difference in the... In the hierarchy or the priority or the order of wali -ship. Yeah. So in this case, if someone does abuse the situation, what aspects would we consider in terms of what is abuse? Yes, this is an important issue, a very important issue in fact. When the father abuses his right as a wali, what does abuses his right as a wali mean? It means that he refuses suitable people to marry his daughter. Is this just once or several times? We'll discuss this. So this means that he is abusing his right, his authority. Yeah, abuse of authority, this is even known in legal system. He is abusing his authority as a father by refusing suitable people to marry his daughter, whom she is happy with. Yeah? A person proposed to her, she is happy with him. He came to her father, he said, no. Why? Why, uncle? He said, no, I, I, I didn't like you. And it happened. Or he might say, well, you are from a different class. Or you do not have enough money. Or you are not rich enough. We consulted the girl and she said, I'm happy with him. I'm happy with him. This is called the Adl. Adlul Awliya. A big musibah. Allah Jalla wa'ala mentioned it in the Quran. فَإِذَا طَلَّقْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَبَلَغْنَا أَجَلَهُنَّ فَلَا تَعْبُلُوهُنَّ أَنْ يَنْكِحْنَا أَزْوَاجَهُمْ Yes, فَلَا تَعْبُلُوهُنَّ means don't prevent them, don't stop them from marrying what? Their ex-husbands if they agree between them mutually. And all the scholars agree about عَضْلُ nisa And they describe it as we describe it. عَضْلُ nisa If the father or the wali abuses his right, what does the woman do? Does Islam give her avenues, other avenues, to get married because this is her right? Or Islam leaves her lonely, vulnerable by herself? No, Islam gives her other avenues to explore, to avoid this father who is abusing his 
Bye. Now, the issue is, can she decide that he is adil now? He is stopping her from marrying whom she deserves or whom she is happy with. She can't decide by herself, otherwise she is what? Acting as the judge, the juror, and the executor. She has to refer to the mahkama. Yeah? The mahkama, the Islamic court. The Islamic court will look at the case. They need, and this is important, they need to get in touch with the father. The proper Islamic courts in Muslim world, they do this. By the way, unfortunately, most of the Muslim or many Muslim countries, they are allowing now women to get married without the permission of the wali. They modified the marriage law so the lady can get married without the permission of the wali. In fact, in the contract of the nikah, I have seen a few from different countries there. There is no nothing, there is no field for the wali. Very strange, subhanAllah. Why? Because the pressure of what is known as women's rights. And they want to change, to redefine or change the family structure, the Islamic family structure, which is the cornerstone of the structure of the whole Islamic society. So surely by removing the wali, after everything we've spoken about, that's removing her right. That's, it's, it's against... Yeah, the they think this is what we mentioned previously. They think that they are giving her more rights. In fact, they are putting her in more troubles. Yeah? They are putting her in more troubles. They are not helping her. Okay? As we have explained before. So, if the lady faces this situation, she has to refer to the Islamic court. Now, the Islamic court, a proper Islamic court that knows what it is doing. Why I'm saying this? Because in the West, there are no Islamic courts. We are, I mean, we as in Britain, the only country in Europe, in Western Europe, to be more specific and more accurate, who have something called Islamic Sharia Council acting as Islamic courts. So she has to come and apply to this Islamic court. She should not go to any imam who has no authority because this is not the job of any imam. Yeah? And I have seen many cases of abuse of the imams or negligence of the imams. A lady goes to the imam and says, well, my father stopped me from marrying a suitable person. He immediately writes that you can marry. Where is the boy you want to get married to? This is the boy. Some of them, they say to her, do you swear by Allah that he stopped you from marrying a suitable person or this person? She says, I swear by Allah that he stopped me from marrying this person. Yes, go get married. I have seen so many cases like this. Sometimes even without any level of investigation. And wallahi those imams are carrying crimes. In many cases against sisters. I remember a case of a sister, very miskeen sister, 18, 19. She came, she's asking for marriage dissolution. So I sat with her. What is your case, sister? You have this marriage. She said, what happened is I knew a boy in the college. College means before university. Yeah? So we love each other. But yeah, you know, because free mixing and yeah, this, this culture naturally happens. naturally happens. So he told me that we can't get married. I didn't know. I just spoke to my mother and I found that my mother will never agree to this and my father will become so angry. And that's why we say the fathers have to be careful and have to be responsible and have to understand the feelings of their children as well. So what did she do? She, behind the back of her father, yeah, went to a masjid with this boy. And the imam carried the nikah. She said, I was in the upstairs, yeah, with uh, a friend of mine and his sister. 
and the boy was downstairs, and they sent me, yeah, the form to sign. And I signed it. His sister pushed me to sign, and that was the marriage. No wali. No wali. Have they asked you, sister, about your wali? She said, no. Why? I told them that it is unlikely that my father will allow me to marry this. Uh, like this? This is abuse. Then this sister, she herself found that it, this is strange. And uh, she's confused. She wants to leave this brother now who took advantage of her. We have so many cases like that. So the imam has to fear Allah and carry out a proper procedure to confirm that the father is actually, yeah, stopping his daughter from marrying a suitable person. We shall continue, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, please return and join us in the discussion of the importance of the wali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Exposing the truth, dispelling lies. What are the differences between the teachings of the church and the teachings of the Bible? Do they really teach the same thing? Is the Bible truly the Word of God? For a comparative study of truth, join me, Arib Islam, only on Peace TV. Join Arib Islam in comparative study every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. of the scholars. So the issue is a problem of knowledge. Asim al-Hakim. Why do people do bid'ah? Imam Malik said, whoever claims there is a good innovation in the deen. Salim al-Amri. He is accusing that Prophet Muhammad did not convey the message. Dr. Mamduh Muhammad. If you know that the Prophet ﷺ did something and I do something else, you have to follow the Prophet ﷺ. Don't follow me. Abdul Rahim Makati. But if each one believes his goal is to please Allah, to follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Abdul Rahim Green. I think this really is to do with your internal state. Where does the Quran and Sunnah point to? Muhammad al Sharif. They have to follow what Allah and His Messenger said. Let's imbibe from these scholars the fruitful solutions for the problems of the world. Which one we would take and which one we would leave? Question to every Muslim. To every Muslim. In the shade of the scholars. Next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back again, brothers and sisters, to this discussion where we shall continue on the importance of the wali and the role that he usually plays in the nikah. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wanted to highlight or possibly explain to myself and the audience what's the difference between the wali and the mahram? Okay. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. The mahram is any male person who is allowed to see the female, to touch her, obviously, okay, to travel with her. He's her mahram. Why he is her mahram? It is haram for her to marry her permanently, not temporary. So the mahram is the male who is haram to marry this lady permanently. That's why he can see her as a mahram. He can touch her as a mahram. He can travel with her as a mahram. Now, the wali is one of those mahram. One of them. Okay, so the wali is always the mahram, but mahram is not always the wali. No, 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 no. We have to be careful, Brother Daniel, because you said the wali is always a mahram. No. Why? Because if there's no 
family structure, for example, like in a revert sister, she would go to the judge. They would she, excellent. So in this scenario, she will go to the judge. The judge will act as what? Uh, wali. wali. As the Prophet وسلم, said, Fasultan Wali man la wali la. The Sultan, the judge, the leader, the Muslim leader, the Imam is a wali for the one who does not have a wali. Yeah? Okay? So the Sultan is a wali, but he's not a mahram. Now, it is a common mistake in the West that some sisters appoint a wali. In the West, and I heard that it is the same in African countries, that the sisters appoint a wali. As I said, a friend or the husband of one of her friends or something like this. And then she deals with him as she is dealing with her mahram. No! This is wrong and this is haram. This is haram. And even they discuss private matters. Then haram happens between her wali and herself. Yeah? No. First of all, don't appoint anyone as your wali. And secondly, the wali function in your case, sister, not to discuss private things with you, not even to discuss private matters with your husband. Once you got married, this judge who acted as your wali has nothing to do with, your, with yourself or with your private affairs with your husband. He, as a judge, he might help any Muslim who comes to him. Or any Muslim, yeah, lady or male or female who comes to him. As simple as this. Is it clear? So that has to be understood by our sisters. Because I found so many mistakes happening like this. La. The mahram is something and the wali is something. In this case, where the sisters, revert sisters, have no wali sisters, whatever, they don't have wali for whatever reason, yeah, they should do their own homework for finding the suitable person. They should not say, I appointed a brother as a wali, and the brother was going and investigating the matter. You can appoint someone to help you. He will not be a wali. Because once you say a wali, eventually you will start discussing private matters. And not only this, this person, he will have authority over you and over your husband. He has no authority over you, nor authority over your husband. All what he does is what? His role is contra. a nikah. That's it. Yeah? Now, some sisters might say, oh, I need to do my homework. Do it in your own way. Okay? Through this brother, you can do it, but not to say that he is wali, because he's not your wali. Before we move on, is there anything else that you can mention? For example, anything that you notice in your experience being in the Sharia Council that you think might be beneficial to the audience? Yeah, I always say to sisters, please, please, okay, don't avoid your parents. Your father is the most qualified person in the world to protect you. I know some sisters will jump. What about if the father abuses his right? Exceptions again. Subhanallah, exceptions again. Let us not discuss it. My dear sisters, wallahi, there is no man who will be keen to protect you, to protect your honor like your father. And after your father is your grandfather or your son or your brother. Okay? But the priority is, number one priority is your father. And sisters, please try to understand the views of your father. When he doesn't want to accept a man, just try to put yourself in his shoes. Be you, when you become old, you will change your thinking. Moreover, you can be easily deceived by other men. Okay? Now, from the other hand, I always say to parents, and especially to fathers, Allah Jalla wa Ala considered the adl in nisa as 
an act that is prohibited. وَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنْ Yeah, in the other ayah, وَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ لِتَذَبُوا بِبَعْضِ مَا عَتَيْتُمُهُنْ Yes? عَضُلْ is haram. And in many cases, I say to brothers, yeah, to fathers, in many cases you might not like the man. She likes him. One of the early scholars was asked, yeah? My daughter liked a man. I didn't like him. What should I do? Yeah, I think Sufyan or one of the scholars said, go for her choice. Go for her choice. In many cases, me as a man might not like how he looks, my, how he eats, how... But if you I check with the daughter, oh, she's fond of him. So let us not push. It is haram for us as men, as fathers, as parents to push our daughters to do haram. And this is adul. And if I move on because of time, I say that in the West, we need to establish something called Sharia councils. Councils to act as courts to help vulnerable sisters to find solutions or avenues for this problem, which is a common problem. And by the way, as I always say to journalists, yeah, non-Muslim journalists who يعني, either attack Islam or their newspapers and their media outlets attack Islam. And they always attack Sharia Council. Yeah? And they say, we don't need Sharia Council. I say, if you come to our Sharia Council, for example, you will find that 90% of our clients are women. Have we knocked on their doors to come to us? No, they are knocking on our doors. They need us. So if you stop it, Who's going to suffer? The women. The women whom you claim that you want to support. You claim you want to support women. Okay. Support them. If you crack down on or close Sharia councils, yeah, then who's going to deal with these problems? And one of those problems is the wali issue. That's why we encourage Muslims in the West to establish Sharia councils, to deal with matrimonial issues. Imams are not enough qualified to deal with Sharia council, and there will be conflict of interest, because a sister might go to Imam, and the Imam might be interested in marrying her. There will be conflict of interest. So it is better to have a body to deal with such problems. Yeah? And the absence of such bodies will lead to hundreds of cases that cannot be solved. And that's why we, in the Islamic Sharia Council in Britain, sometimes we receive cases from other European countries because there is no Sharia Council in other European countries. And as we mentioned, this is, this is very much needed for the society. Oh, yeah, 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 without a shadow of a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt. We want to move on to the issue of forced marriages and the, the role of the wali in this. Is, is this something that's fairly common? Yes, we need to define what forced marriage is. And we said that the consent has to be given by three people. The man has to consent, the daughter has to consent, the wali has to consent. Forced marriage means the daughter did not consent. So she is marrying against her will. Yeah? Against her will, not she is okay. No, 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 no. Against her will. Okay? She doesn't want her father force her. And this differentiates between forced marriage and arranged marriage. Arranged marriage is families, extended families. The father pursue his daughter or his sister and advises her to marry this person. And sometimes he encourages her. Sometimes even he pushes her, but he doesn't force her. Yeah? Families agree, for example. It is wrong, 
but they, they agree. Okay, this boy, inshallah, will marry your daughter. Or my daughter will be married to your son. Yeah, and they just build on this. It is very common in some countries. This is arranged marriage. Now, forced marriage is haram without a shadow of a doubt, and in many cases is invalid. But arranged marriage is different. Yeah? If there is no push, it is a valid marriage. Yeah. We run out of time, but I think we will just spend a couple of minutes in the next episode finishing off this topic. Inshallah. Brothers and sisters, please come to us in the next episode where we shall continue talking about the role of the wali. Specifically, we might be able to clear up the issue of forced marriage and the difference with arranged marriage before we move on to the very important topic of mutually agreed conditions within the nikah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.